Hello class, my name is Joseph Murray, and today I will be answering Gerardo Valenzuela's question. His question is, can the COVID-19 pandemic have the same effects as the Black Death had on being a leveler of inequality as it did in Western Europe, or can COVID-19 even be compared to the Black Death based on it being a lever, leveler? Excuse me. My answer is un unfortunately, no, it is not really comparable. No, it did not level. No, it did not really help economic inequality. It is quite different from the Black Plague. So when we look at a historical perspective, the land-owning elites during the time of the Black Plague sourced their money specifically from the hard labor of the peasants. And when we look at who the victims of the Black Plague were, it was mostly the peasants. And obviously when you're a landowner, you have land that needs to be farmed, crops, animals, these sorts of things that need a lot of hands-on labor. So the sources of income for the landowning elites during the Black Plague, basically lost their means of revenue. It is not the same with the COVID-19 pandemic. And the reason being is that a lot of the sources of income that the, um, our version of the landowning elites today, some people call them the top 1%, call them what you will, the financial resources that the elites have in the 21st century is very different from what they had during the Black Plague. When you look at the way that they make money, they make a lot of money through stock markets, they make a lot of money through the housing markets, they make a lot of money trading a lot of resources, things that are necessities, right? When you look at how much money do you think Walmart made during the COVID pandemic? A lot, because everyone was panicked buying a lot of things. And the elites today, and the true elites, I don't mean the small business owners, not the people worth tens of millions of dollars, I'm talking about the people worth billions of dollars a lot of their wealth is not concentrated in their own companies. And that might be true for Elon Musk or, or Jeff Bezos. However, a lot of the other elites don't really invest only in their own company, but they're rather financial partners in many companies. And those companies are obviously companies that are necessary for life, right? Food, water, fuel, these sorts of things. And when you look at the wealth of the elites over the COVID pandemic, their net worth on average increased about 70%. Now 70% is a crazy return for one year's time, especially when you look at that 70% relative to everyone else, right? Most families, mine included, were financially hurting during the pandemic. It was, you know, a lot of people were out of work, things were more expensive. We certainly did not increase our net worth by 70%. And that is mainly due to the knock-on effects of the Industrial Revolution, the increase of capitalism, some will call it crony capitalism, say what you will. It has a compounding effect. The more diverse our job market gets, the more specified our technology can be, the more markets there are that can be manipulated, the more venues of success or avenues to making money there are for the elites, right? So an example I used earlier, housing market. Okay. So when you think about the housing market, if someone's making money, someone's losing money, right? If let's say there's a house that goes for $500,000, generally speaking, you buy it for $500,000. If you make $200,000 on that, you sold it for $700,000. Now that's a profit to you, but someone else is getting a house that is in real value worth less, right? Obviously all things, their value depreciates over time, cars, Obviously, the walls are not as new in my house as they were when the house was first built. That means it is physically worth less. However, due to the market manipulation, it's worth more. And if you, and this might sound confusing to some of you, but I encourage you to do your own research and look at who bought the majority of houses during the COVID-19 pandemic. Although there were a lot of individuals, um, re realtors, things like that, most of the houses that were being bought during the COVID pandemic were bought by super banks. They were bought by conglomerates of the top 1% who were buying most of the houses and then jacking up the cost, right? So when there's, and I will call it an economic depression, I understand that it was a pandemic, but in terms of the job market loss, stock market loss, things like that, it was getting close to a recession. When we, had, when we enter a recession, people have to sell their homes for less than they bought them for because of the financial stress. Now, the people who are not impacted, like I already said, the people whose net worth increased by 
they go back in and buy those houses, turn around and sell them to you after the recession for more than what you originally sold it for. We can see the same thing with the stock market, right? A lot of people made a lot of money in the stock market, but 94, I think 94, might be 95% of the people who are making of, excuse me, I'm sorry, about 95% of the amount of stocks being traded were traded by people in the top 1%. A lot of people were making a lot of trades and a lot of stocks, but the majority of the action were done by the top 1%. Forbes had a good article. I will link it below. I mean, the billionaires in this country, their net worth went up by 70%. They had the bulk of the stock market transactions. So in long form, what I'm trying to answer here is when you ask, do pandemics still serve as a leveler? The answer is no, hell no not even close. It is the exact opposite. There's a inverse relationship with pandemics today and pandemics of the past. And that is because the people who are in the top 1% of our economic strata are the people who are making money in a hands-off sort of manner through mechanisms that aren't directly related to the health and the well-being of the average citizen. So it's unfortunate. You would think that historically it would continue to be a leveler and it's just not the case. I would like to see, obviously, some ethical rules being introduced because when you look at a lot of the people who are buying the houses, it's kind of like ticket scalpers at a football game, you know? We have laws against that because it's unethical. People are buying up all the, like, scalping is often illegal. If you think about it, you buy all the, oh, you buy a significant portion of the tickets to a football game for the lower cost, and then once all the tickets are gone, you quadruple the price and force people to spend more. That's not fair. It is illegal. That is not allowed but we have the exact same thing happening in all the other markets where the money is made it's the same thing happening with our homes right they go in they buy all the houses they wait until there's no more houses left on the market and they increase the price far past what its real worth value is so unfortunately we're we're kind of using 18th century logic on 21st century conditions a lot of the laws when you look at um a lot of the antitrust and monopoly related laws really just do not apply to the 21st century. So that is in long form the reason why the COVID-19 pandemic was a pandemic that did not serve as an economic leveler, but in fact served to increase the relative gap in the relative economic inequality in this country. I hope that answers your question. Thank you.